Ross and I'm excited to take you on a tour of the MVM lab here at Synopsys and walk you through a number of tests we put our IP through, giving you an assurance that when you incorporate the DesignWare MVM IP into your IC that they are fully qualified and functional for applications requiring stringent standards such as automotive. Let's start the tour. Our tour begins at the probe station. To build MVM IP, we need a handful of unique devices that are characterized on the probe station. We call them unique devices because they are not provided by the foundries. For example, high voltage transistors that can sustain the programming operations are needed. In a process with the 3.3 volt I.O. device, the high voltage can be as high as 12 volts. Clearly, a standard 3.3 volt device will not work. The trick is to find a device layout that can work with high voltages without adding extra mass. Here we have a 5x5 die. The die contains many variants of our unique device on a specific process. Each device is characterized via the probes that contact the pads. Once you have contacted the target device, its characteristics are collected on the parametric analyzer. Going back to our high voltage device example, you can see here that we can sweep the drain voltage all the way up to 14 volts before the device breaks down, which exceeds our requirement. Pretty cool for a 3.3 volt process. We repeat this measurement over temperature and use all this data to build a device model for our designers. Up next is our characterization set of tests. The goal of characterization is to identify how much margin to spec we have for erase, program, and read as a function of process, temperature, and voltage. We do this by measuring the chip performance over temperature and voltage. These tests are performed on our own versatile tester called Nighthawk. Nighthawk performs timing and analog measurements, as well as runs reliability experiments such as endurance. Nighthawk is fully automated to maximize efficiency. Our MVM test chips are assembled in a ceramic package. You'll see why later. These chips are inserted on either individual or parallel test boards. When fully loaded, Nighthawk can test 48 chips in parallel. The test boards are loaded inside a temperature chamber. We measure the exact chip performance at a precise temperature and voltage condition. The temperature can go from minus 55 Celsius all the way up to 175 Celsius. The extreme temperatures are especially important for the automotive market where junction temperature of 175 Celsius and beyond is more and more common. Ultimately, the results are collected and stored in a database for data analysis. A typical result is a shmoo plot, which shows the pass and fail regions for our IP against the specifications. Let's go to the next station where we'll describe data retention testing. A key characteristic of MVM is its ability to retain data when no power is applied to the IC. A typical retention spec is 10, 15, or even 20 years. How can we validate this? To put it simply, we monitor the rate of charge loss as a function of time and temperature and build a model. Temperature is the key variable that accelerates charge loss. We use this acceleration to collect data in a timely fashion. Remember that our chips are assembled in ceramic packages. This allows us to bake at temperatures up to 275 Celsius. As you can see, we have many different oven temperatures, which we need to model the temperature acceleration factor. These parts have been baking in the oven for six weeks at 250 Celsius. After the chips cool down, we test them on our Nighthawk tester. We call this a read point. First, we log the technology, bake temperature, and bake time so that we can track it back in the database. We perform a digital read where we check that it reads back the correct pattern. As you can see, it does. We also measure the cell currents coming from each individual MVM bit cell. The cell current data tells us how much charge has been lost during the bake and helps us extrapolate over time. This MVM IP shows a very robust window. Using our acceleration model, we calculate that these parts have good retention after approximately 20 years at 150 Celsius, or 2 million years at 25 Celsius. In other words, excellent retention. During our IP qualification, hundreds of MVM IP are baked and measured to guarantee that our product meets specification. Our sample size actually exceeds industry standards. Our last station is where we run our HTOL test. The objective of this test is to use temperature and voltage to accelerate the MVM IP operating life by continuously reading its content. First, we load our HTOL test board with up to 30 chips. Once the board is fully loaded, we select a stress voltage and insert the board into the test slot. The tester holds up to 11 boards for a total of 330 chips tested in parallel. Once the oven reaches its temperature, the test starts. The LEDs on the control box show activity inside the oven. The boards are sending signals to the chips, which allow us to read every IP on every chip at the same time. In its default configuration, 
We do one read per microsecond. If there is a read failure, the failure is recorded by our computer. This allows us to dynamically stress the MVM arrays at worst case conditions. What you want to see is a lot of reads without failures. During our IP qualifications, the total number of reads performed during the HTOL is equivalent to well over 1 million reads per day for 10 years. This concludes our 360 degree view of the MVM lab, giving you insurance that when you incorporate the Designware MVM IP into your IC, that they are fully qualified and functional. The silicon proven Designware MVM is a high performance area optimized IP. It provides multiple time programmable MVM in a standard CMOS process without the additional mask or processing steps. It operates on a single core supply, easing MVM programming. For more information, visit synopsis.com. Thanks for watching.